All right. Hi, everybody, and welcome to my podcast. I'm Ashley Graham, and this is Pretty Big Deal. We're going to talk about business, beauty, culture, and owning who you are. We also want to hear from you. Go to Pretty Big Deal on Twitter and Instagram. You can also go to Anchor and send me a voice message. You can just say, like, hi, Ashley. Hope you have a wonderful day. Or you can ask me some hard questions. I really want to know what you guys are thinking, how you guys are really actually changing the world today we're gonna be talking to a real life movie star and in fact this movie star is an author she's a comedian she has clearly the art of keeping it real down to a pact and I just want to enter <laughs> and that's her dog Amy Schumer okay. <laughs> Tatiana come over here an introduction what a great yourself. introduction. Tatiana, you are just the cutest little pea pie Tati, I've ever seen. Tati, are you going to be cool? <laughs> are you going to be cool? Thanks for having me. Yes. Any excuse to get to spend some time with you. Oh, you're, first of all, thank you for doing this. Second of all, she came here alone, everybody. So you live on the Upper West Side. Yeah. We are currently in New York City. Yeah. Did you take the subway? I didn't take the subway here, but I do mostly take the subway. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. I mean, because I don't, <laughs> you and don't. you're way more famous than me. Like, I don't think that's necessarily true. No, no, no. You're like. We should do a, co like a contest. <laughs> we should do it. We should go out. Who's more famous? Yeah. I think it would probably be you. And you know the difference between you and me is like, that also men would be excited to see you. <laughs> like with me, it's always like a goth, you know, like 13 right. year old. Right. Um, no, I don't know. I get, I get like. On, you probably get this too. Like I get older women, sometimes younger women, running up to me crying. Yeah. Yeah, and that is something that feels good, but also can be very scary because you're like, there's a woman running up to me crying. Like, I know, and it depends on you know what where you are in your life. But I've yeah. also done that to people. Like the first time I met Gloria Steinem, <laughs> no. I was just like, and Gloria, and you're, and you're quotes, and she was just like, okay, you know. And then I kind of got a hold of myself and was able to talk to her, but. Yeah, I try okay. to, but you know, it's the kind of thing where if I have time, like I'll talk to someone for a long time. But if you know, if you're busy or you just got bad news or whatever, yeah. I try to keep like good crap. boundaries. Yeah, yeah I know. but the subway, it's that's why we love New York. Like, really, no one cares. I was <laughs> they I was, get over it, so they go, oh, yeah, oh, that's that. And yeah. then you see it later on Twitter, like I saw Amy Schumer on the yeah. C train coming yeah. from the Upper West Side. Yeah, and you know, people, I they say this to me all the time. Um, they say like. Today, someone was like, you are much prettier in person. Oh. And you're like, thank you, question mark? Yeah. I'm like, okay, for just you here right now instead of like I always millions. get the, you're not even as big as I thought you'd be. <laughs> Everybody yeah. says that. That's insane. Everybody says that, right? Says that. Okay, so this is Darcelle, my assistant. Hi. And Hola. she is like Hola. just my right-hand lady. Yeah. Love her to death. Um but she hears all the negative shit that happens in my life. It's just everyone that I know that has met you and is like, oh, she's not that big. Isn't it she's nice like to you. have a witness? Yes! You're like, can I get a witness? Like, <laughs> can I get Just somebody a that sees what you, the day to day. It, it makes you feel a lot less alone. I, I thank you. Yeah. Um, so I feel like for the for the viewer yeah. and, and, and for everybody who really does care, we have to um, address the elephant in the room. Let's do it. Okay, are you ready, set, go. Go. So we had not beef, but media made it into a beef. And then we like kind of said, I love you on Twitter. Yeah, and yeah. And then everything was like, but you took the high road. Like you could have been like, bitch, you suck. And well, I could have been like, but I love you. But I was just trying to like <laughs> no. say you were You what were I so thought. kind. It was really like, <sighs> so I, um, I learned so much and like I'm very aware of the fact that I, I, I learn you learn so much every year you yeah, know and that's why being a, a writer or someone who creates content is extra you know sort of risky and brave now because you're like a year from now I could be like I didn't know what the fuck I was talking about you know mm -hmm. so um I was included in the glamour magazine yes. plus size, size issue size, size issue, issue. size yeah. issue mm -hmm. um and they used the pictures from when I'd been on the cover and they right. didn't tell me I was being included right. and they didn't ask or anything like which legally they don't have to. I didn't know any of this. And um, and I felt uh, betrayed. I felt like 
I don't think it's a positive thing to, to label people. Like, I, and, and I really like, you know, this is something that you've, you have so much more info than I do, but it was at like, the time. at the time, yeah, like since then I, I've, I've woken up to it, but, um, and I kind of felt like, you know, because people will say about you, about, you know, the way that they like classify our bodies, um, they're like, okay, that's plus size, then right. what am I, you mm -hmm. know, like, I get worried about how, what it's going to mean to like the greater population like right. what it, what is what, what is, is said about girls? me like how does this make other people feel mm -hmm. you know um I've always felt good like I, I not always I mean we all but uh and so you know I knew if I speak out I'm annoying mm -hmm. I'm ashamed of my body whatever but I didn't anticipate what you said mm -hmm. which um which like just really woke me up. It was like I was just like, hey, if you want to be a part of the conversation, be a part of the conversation. Right. Right. Yeah, you were like, you like, because it it was sounding like I was making plus size sound like a negative thing, and not even the word plus size because I don't agree with the word plus size. Right. Because I also too think it's a very divisive word, uh -huh. and I think that if we are labeling women because of the number inside of their pants, then we're categorizing them in a way that is is. Again, it's divisive, and men yeah. don't do that, and unnecessary. Yeah, it really is. And and the, and there is like such a stigma that comes with um, with the word, and what, and then yeah, somebody else like telling you what you are. Yeah. So anyway, I really didn't care for that. Um, and then you were kind of like, uh, I said in a Cosmo article, like, hey, Amy, if yeah. you want to be in the world, yeah, and talk about being a big girl in your skits, yeah, then own it, right. And, and part of me said that because I really wanted you to be a part of this community because mm -hmm. you are a part of this community, yeah. whether you want to be or not. Right. Because society is always going to put you in that box. Totally. Right? So it's like that's where I am with perception. So at the time that came out, I was a size, a six or an eight. Okay. Okay. What size are you now? 10 or 12. You've gained weight since then? Um, yeah. I and, you know, been able to tell. I'm strong, you know, like <laughs> I, I gain it everywhere. Right. Um, it always it. goes right to my face immediately. <laughs> and then the rest catches up. Um, but it was like, I realized when I shot Trainwreck, I was like so skinny for me. And I Love didn't really like feel, oh, thank you. I didn't really feel good. I didn't feel like as strong and I have as much energy as I usually would. And, and I was like, they already write about me like, um, in this way, mm -hmm. uh, so like fuck it. What uh, I'm not gonna try. What am I trying to hold on to? So why go this to unattainable thing. I want to just feel healthy and strong, and sexual and mm -hmm. and that's it. And I was I'm like I'm not gonna worry about it anymore. Um, and so what what I learned from our thing, which I, I and so I reached out to you. Yeah. And was like, hey, like I hear you. I'm sorry. And yes. like I want to be educated about this. Yeah. And you were really sweet. And you were like, cool. Like because you weren't looking to have any beef with I don't me. Want beef. No, we all need to be working together and lifting each other up. And um, and I really appreciate when people have the patience to be like, I will, like tell, I'll I'll explain this to you. Yeah. And that's that's how I felt. And and what I took my takeaway from that whole thing was how uh, unnecessary and how negative it is to label anybody. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's not necessary. And God, like, can we stop having? the diverse issue, the plus anything, like, I know. can it not be a special event that I you're know. not using a stick thin woman? That's what I tell everybody. Like we know so that we've boring. actually like come over all of this when we don't have to be like celebration with a curvy girl on the cover of blah, blah, blah. I know. I know. How do you not kill yourself? Okay, um, maybe a different question. I'm really happy. Do you think that's a good question to ask? Wait. Magazine that's supposed to be empowering women. You also talked about how people are like, Oh, you're so brave for being in that swimsuit. Yeah, they're like, wow, she really just put her whole crazy body out there. I'm like, <laughs> I feel so good. And uh, and I, I have eyes. Like, I can see that um, someone will be, like, a lot smaller than me or whatever. But I don't think they're any happier than me. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm happy that I get to, like, have pasta and and drink and and still feel good mm -hmm. and then I have found a way to you know 
carve out this career path without having to starve myself like so many of my friends. You and me both. <laughs> I know. Every, that's why everyone's <laughs> probably mad at us. We both have targets on our heads. Because yes. they're like, oh, I haven't had a cookie in so long. <laughs> I'm like, I had one for breakfast. <laughs> do you work out at all? Oh, yeah. Where do you work out? I, um, I'm an athlete. Like, I played volleyball really seriously oh. and competitively. And then... Uh, yeah, and then like I've done some triathlons and stuff, and I love boxing. And triathlons. Then triathlons. Holy yeah. moly! When did you do your last one? I was twelve. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, no, I did them in college, and then a little after college. My job in college was teaching group exercise. I was certified to teach kickboxing. Oh yeah, you talk about this in um, something. Yeah, somewhere in your book. I was running my yap. Yeah. Um, no, but, but you do. You talk about it in your book, um, "Girl with a Lower Back Tattoo." Oh, okay, good. I'm glad I talked about it. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, and I just, um, I like feeling strong, and I, I only feel good if I've, like, had a really good workout that day. But uh, So you work yeah. out every day? Strength training, yeah. That's great, though. Yeah. I try to stretch every day. Like, rolling on the foam roller, I think, is very important. Yeah. You stay it young hurts. and mobile. Myofascia. Myofascia. That is, I'm going like, to try it. Yeah. So, uh, rewind. I just gave uh, Amy my myofascia guy, uh, L.A., and New York. Yeah. It hurts like hell. Like he puts his elbow and his and his thumbs into your fascia. Can I go under? No. <laughs> and he literally I'll peels it. I'll find a way it. to put myself under. He peels it apart. Yeah, you can do whatever you want that beforehand. That sounds awful. But you it's so it's so effective. I bruise. did it. I'm like a peach. It. Oh, I'm did like you feel a better? flower. Yes, for like a month, no pain. A month. Can okay. you imagine a month without pain? No. Mayo freaking fascia. Damn. Okay, so we get it. We're big girls in a very skinny world. Yeah. Like, and we're just continuing to, like, fight the good fight. Yeah. And I also want to say to, like, the reader, and I feel like you agree, like, it's okay to be a big girl. It's okay to have, quote, Amy Schumer, sweet cellulite. Yeah. Um, and, and back that. It's good. And it's, like, so what? So for me, I know what I tell all the young girls yeah. out there, even women our age. What do you want to tell them? Women who are... Get a dog. Get a dog. But um, women who are dealing with, like, identity issues of hating themselves, hating their body, hating who who they are because society tells them they're okay. ugly. I want to tell them that we're all going to die. <laughs> Facts. You're all... Like, we're all going to die. And what if you're on your deathbed and you're thinking, think about all the time you wasted worrying about that shit. Have fun. Mm -hmm. Take care of yourself so you can feel good. And and enjoy your friends and your life. And that's who you really are, who mm -hmm. you are with your friends. And I, I don't think about how I look. And it's really nice. Mm -hmm. You know, it's really freeing. Because we're, we're so, this stuff is hammered into our heads. Mm -hmm. How we're supposed to be as women. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And women are taught, like, you're supposed to try to disappear. And men mm -hmm. are supposed to take up more space. And I just totally reject that. Mm -hmm. And um, I like yeah. that. We're all gonna die. So we're all gonna die. Why? Why Who suffer? Who cares? Who cares what now? other people think about you? People get so obsessed with their own little. It's like it's exhausting to be a, around somebody who's like so worried about obsessed, how they obsessed, look. Obsessed, yeah. Obsessed. No, I, I like that advice. Speaking of podcasts, you just yeah. started one. Yeah. Three girls, one Keith. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> can you please tell me first of all the origination of Three Girls, One Keith? Totally. So I heard that you could make money doing a podcast <laughs> and I Same. wanted to make it done deal so that's it yeah no um, who are the other ladies and who is this who's random Keith? Keith so the people on the podcast it's um they're my best friends it's okay. uh Keith Robinson who's a comedian and we joke that he's the oldest comedian in the world but <laughs> he sounds like an old man on we the don't podcast. know I had to he's... google him I did. And I was like, oh, he's not that old. No, but you can't tell because he looks he looks deceivingly young. But his voice is like of an old 80-year-old smoker. It's like who's tone low. Like, he's like, yeah. hey, ladies and gentlemen. He's like, funky, call Medina. Yeah, yeah he's, <laughs> he's like completely deranged. One of our best friends, uh, yeah, Rachel Feinstein, comedian, and Bridget Everett, who's a, a singer and, okay. a, and a live performer. And we're best friends anyway. We've been on the road a lot together. The and four so, of you. The four of us. Wow. So we do it at my apartment. And it's just Which like. Which I'm coming to, ladies and gentlemen. You do need to come. You've got to come Me on. Me too. And thank you. You are welcome. <laughs> it's, uh, I'm sorry. Sorry. 
<laughs> Everybody's invited. Tatiana will be there barking all over the place. Um, yeah, the only rule is you have to be mean to Keith. But it'll just happen really? naturally. Well, we oh, just, okay. He's morally bankrupt. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, we're just like bad people. And so there was really no demand. We didn't follow the supply-demand model. Nobody wanted it. Uh, but we figured out we could make money, and it was just really fun. And wow. so we're going to keep doing it. People, I don't know, people are enough people are listening to it that they want us to keep doing it so season two is coming out season two is gonna come out um, it's nonsense okay so you're a newlywed yeah how long have you been married now six months oh my god right now this okay. staple anniversary i mean like this is insane <laughs> yeah it's weird okay i need the full breakdown the whole thing because okay so chris fisher yeah he's a chef yeah he's married six i'm months. a genius i mean are you a chef he is, Justin okay. is an incredible cook. Okay, smart. I can't is. cook, so this is what I like to say. I'm almost the perfect woman, I just don't cook or clean. Yeah. No, I think that is the perfect woman. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I have a cleaning lady, and I have Justin. There you go. Here I am, ladies and gentlemen. And we're living a very similar life. Uh, my engagement period was two months. Okay. But I dated Justin for a year. All right. So I think I can relate to you. Yeah, mine, my, we were engaged for four days. <laughs> <laughs> we were just like... I didn't want any of the drama of a wedding. We knew we wanted to get married. Like, you, you, when you meet, it was yeah. so easy. When did you meet? We met, uh, like, it was a year ago in May. Okay. And just as friends, and he was cooking for me and my family. And uh, Oh, so he was, like, the hired chef? Yeah. Okay, got His it. His sister is my assistant. Like no. she's she's like got a different job, so she won't right. be that much longer. But, um, but yeah, she was my assistant, and she's like, "Oh, my, we'll be in Martha's Vineyard. That's where they're from. My yeah. brother cooks," and so he came to cook for the family. We just met, and I was like, "Oh, he's so cute!" Like, he is so chef cute. from Martha's Vineyard. Like, fuck off, you know. <laughs> and um, but and we just we we got along really well, but nothing. And I was so you didn't sleep someone. together then. No, no, we didn't sleep together until we like got together you know and so then last september uh we i was like i reached out i called him i got mm -hmm. his number i was like can i call him wait we you asked anything. for his number yeah i asked for his number because it had always gone through molly through my assistant and then we just had this one night where we hung out wait so wait, wait, wait. you have to back up yeah you asked your assistant who is the sister to, mm -hmm. the, to chris to to give to, me her brother's phone number what did she say she was like, sure. She was worried she'd lose her job. Oh, my God. <laughs> and then, yeah, because I'm sure Darcel would be also very nervous. That No. no? Okay, no, she's not sure. nervous. Okay. Uh, she's yeah. a very confident woman. Yeah, I love that. Um, That's what we do here. What, what did you say to him when you texted him? Like, hey, well, it's Amy. So like, I called him, and he answers the phone. Like, we had never even flirted. You know? I want to make a romantic comedy where you don't, where you actually meet how you actually meet. Oh, like, we didn't have any witty banter. You know in movies where they're like, in here. I mean, I've done it in the movies right, I've been in. Right. And I'm like, it's not like that. If someone came up to you and, like, had a great banter, you'd be like, get out of here. We had a really good I banter. Love it. Justin did. and I had a good banter. So we met in an elevator, and yeah. he found me on Facebook that night. This was before I was famous. Yeah. And he was like, hi, elevator lady. This is your security guard. <laughs> and I was like, oh, bouncer. And literally, I was like, this is happening. <laughs> oh. And okay. I need Hi. a new chair. Hi, yeah. bouncer. Hi. Yeah. But then I played very hard to get. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It oh, no. Is. He took me out, and then yeah. I didn't see him again after that for at least a month. Ooh. Yeah. Wow, we have very different techniques. Yeah. No, mine is like, you chase me. You let me know how how good of a runner you are. Yeah. And yeah. then we can decide after that. Yeah. Right. Oh, Real but time. then, but then, but then, what had happened was, I couldn't make a decision on if I wanted to be with him or not. So okay. he said, "I'm gonna leave you if you don't, if you aren't gonna show up to That's this." Not what I said. What did you say? I would not wait forever for you to make up your mind. <sighs> wow. Oh, oh, Tatiana. Tatiana. <laughs> She did not care for that tone. <laughs> Tatiana, let the people know. So it was like a, wow. week, a week later, and I was like, okay, I'm ready to be your girlfriend. Okay, so what I did was the first time 
he even like kissed me on the cheek. He was inside me in like an hour. Oh wow! <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Different trajectory. Same result. But we. Um. Yeah. Oh, but I made Justin wait till we were married to have sex. Shut. No, get he made me a good. Uh, I tried to have sex with him. <laughs> I even Tati's not comfortable with <laughs> any of this. It's okay, Tati. She has sex with everything that's around her we, size that's right. on the floor. Um, ma'am, come here, honey. Oh, All right. How she needs a little, a little love. So, so Chris so kissed Chris you on the cheek me. an hour well, no, later. He, he like, was inside. I was like, I called him, oh, yeah. and he answered the phone. Like, I, we'd never even flirted, okay? He so answered he, the phone by going, we, we just hung out one night, and we talked. Like, he was like, I, I just made judgments about him. I was like, he's a chef on Martha's Vineyard. He's so cute. I bet he's, like, a, you know, a dick and a player and whatever, and, and not that smart. And then we talked, and he was, like, so smart and so funny, and I liked him. And I was like, Molly, I like your brother. Can I call him? She was like, yeah, sure. So I called him, and he answered the phone by saying, what if she had said no? I wouldn't have. No, her. Molly. I know. I wouldn't have called Oh, then him. you wouldn't have called. No, because we, we were really close really fast. Okay, okay, okay. I mean, the ultimate sort of, I mean. That's what happens. That's what happens, and the thing is. We're too close. If, but what the ultimate compliment is being like, I love you and trust you enough to marry my brother. You right. Know? No, that is. Um, so anyway, I called him, and he answered the phone by saying, do you think this is a good idea? And I'm like, maybe I'm calling to ask for a recipe, motherfucker. He you know? literally picked up the phone and said that? Do you think this is a good idea? I go, maybe I'm calling about something else. He goes, no, I think we both like feel a connection and um, oh. and we should like pursue it if, if it's a good idea, if it's okay with Molly. Yeah, I was just like, no one has ever talked to me that way, you know? That's that's the thing about men. Yeah. When they are that confident, yeah. I mean, anything can go down It was after really that. attractive. And I was like, I'm interested in you. And then and then we just kind of were like, we text a little and we were like, maybe it's not a good idea. I felt like a little rejected, um, you know, from nothing, like right. something I projected. Of course. And I just totally pulled back. We I all like, do that. So then we, we hung out, like just again with friends and um, he cooked at my friend's 40th birthday party. And then the next night, they were, he's like packing up and he came up just came up behind me and like put his arms around me and, and kissed my neck. And I was like, okay. And I mean, we, we had sex like a second later, you know? <laughs> and then Wait, after we had the sex, barbecue? this was, yeah, well, yeah. So after we had sex, it was like this, you know, no, there's that moment. No, we had sex at the barbecue, that's what I'm Well, asking. it was in my house. Oh, okay, okay. But, um, you didn't find but there was barbecue involved. <laughs> no, so we had sex and then uh, I have had a habit of, not liking sleeping next to people. Mm -hmm. like oh, there's a wreck. lot of people like that. Though. Like train wreck. Yeah. yeah. Yes, just like in train wreck. <laughs> yeah. And so, but I wanted him to stay, and he wanted to stay. And then in the morning, I was like, God, Did you I cuddle don't... through the night? I'm not that. Okay, person. you're not that person. No, never, no, never I'm not about that life. <laughs> no, um, no, I'm like, I don't even want to like feel that you're nearby yeah <laughs> we have a california king which is like the size wow. of this set yeah i'm just like i have to text him if i want to get in touch with him we are still living that queen life what i know do you guys sleep like cuddled is um, that you i like to be the big spoon in fact i demand it <laughs> uh, in fact i'm like roll over and he's like oh <laughs> he's like what's digging into me <laughs> yeah don't worry about it's it it's my biggest titties <laughs> <laughs> but he likes it good yeah. yeah i'm like please don't touch me no <laughs> Do you find yourself being as funny on stage as you are at home behind closed doors? We have a lot of fun. Yeah. Like, we're both very dumb, you know? <laughs> I mean, he's he's Is he so funnier funny. Than you? No, that's crazy. <laughs> I'm so funny. <laughs> no, but he really makes me laugh hard. Um, yeah, he's, he's, he's really, really funny. I love that. Yeah. So you dated six months. Yeah, we dated for six months, and then... And he's put a ring on it? Yeah, like, we were like, we wanted to just be married. We were like, I'm done. I, you know, I want to partner up with you for life. Wow. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, so then we... we he, he, he the, the engagement was horrible. Four days. Yeah, it was like, I Wait, was, was asleep. was it horrible because... It was the morning. He just, like, you know, he's like a dude. He 
gave me the ring box. It was like more na- like I was like, huh, you know, and he <laughs> I took one earplug out and he like gave me the box. He's like, I got you this. And I was like, he goes, do you want me to get on one knee? I was like, I guess not. <gasps> and I went back to sleep. That's hilarious. Did yeah. you put the ring on? Yeah, I put the <laughs> ring on. I was like, because I was like, I don't want a diamond. I've never worn jewelry my whole life. That's so weird. But he got it for me anyway. And I'm glad. Who planned the wedding? We both did. We planned it. You planned it in four days? On a Thursday. We, we were like, Thursday, well, we're going to get married Tuesday. Yeah. And we just did it. We just like called friends oh and gosh. I text people. A lot of people thought it was a joke. No, like serious. some people didn't come because well, they thought it was a joke. we all saw it on Instagram. We thought it was a joke. I know. Yeah. We were yeah. like, oh, ha ha. This is a She's so funny. Right. Yeah. And then boom, it's like, oh no, they're actually really she married. She got this girl got married. Yeah. yeah. I thought our engagement was like short. It was only two months. Yeah. And Justin wanted to have like the big wedding and mm-hmm. I wanted to elope. Yeah. So I said, great, you get to plan it. And I literally. <laughs> great, I'll show up. What's yeah. my call time? <laughs> Seriously though, that's exactly what I did. Good. And I just went and got my wedding dress with my mom. Bada bing, yeah. bada boom. I highly recommend that. Like, I just do. I feel Anything like, else seems nuts. Yeah. What do you do? And all the money and the Seriously. stress and the drama. Um, do you guys have marriage mentors that you kind of say, like, hey, we're going through this. Like, we want to talk to you about that. Or Yeah. I mean, honestly, any married person we meet, we're just, like, talk to us. And you know what's what I've noticed is that once you're married, like, a lot of people come out of the woodworks. They go, being married is really great. Yeah. And, and people didn't want to tell you that. When you weren't married because they didn't want you to feel like you were missing something. Yeah. But I would have liked to have known. It's mm-hmm. it's really fun. It's I, nice to have your partner. I love it. I know. <laughs> that you don't cuddle with through the night. No, he cannot touch me. <laughs> <laughs> get out of here. So, obviously, after you get married, everybody's yeah. like, when are you having a baby? Yeah. Or they're proclaiming that you are pregnant. I know. I was like, listen, I always have a bump alert. Hell, so like this like, will always be my here. My friend is here. Yeah. So no and need. And she'll always stick out. Yeah. And she will probably always jiggle. I think if and when I get pregnant, I will just like, I, I, I mean, we could probably deny it pretty long. <laughs> It'd be nine months. Like, nope, you guys know me. <laughs> Love pasta. How okay, so I know how I deal with the criticism on Instagram and social media and everybody's yeah. like the the craziest thing I ever heard was stop making fat look cool, you're gonna kill someone. <laughs> I know. And I definitely lashed back out at this dude, but yeah. I wanna know like what is it that you do to kind of like lash out because Yeah. Well honestly you, it's you been it a really politely. it's been a really long time that I've been getting backlash. Like because people just know better? No, no. Um you're used to it. I'm just so used to it. It's been 10 solid years of getting a, you know, a lot of both positive and negative stuff online. Mm-hmm. And, um, I, you know, I'm a communicator. I, I stand ups like you want to communicate. Mm-hmm. So when, when something is not true, mm-hmm. I hate that. Right. I hate when there's a backlash. That's just a lie. Um, people saying I'm ugly or fat or not funny that is not something that affects me mm-hmm. anymore. Like, mm-hmm. there's just nothing about my appearance that could be, I, I, because it's already happened. Like, like they the can meanest shoot the gun stuff. and you have a shield on and it bounces off. It, not even, because I'm just so desensitized to mm-hmm. it. You know, mm-hmm. there were times where it was painful mm-hmm. and it's just, that ship sailed like a really long time ago. But the way I deal with it is, you know, because for, I don't care about that stuff, honestly. I, I Right now I care about the stuff we all care about and yeah. like which I do want to talk about yeah we are going to talk about everything you care about because right. I care about a lot of the same issues of course just everything I do is I want to have fun I want to be healthy I want to have a great life friends family but with career stuff I, I just I want to really help with equality for mm-hmm. women and people of color mm-hmm. like that's all that's my thing you mm-hmm. know also you know I know that global warming is is uh, the issue. worst thing happening but I'm like I'm going to put all my focus on this Mm -hmm. and on anything you can do to help with gun violence. But uh, other than that, like hate on the Internet. And and, I mean, I've got uh, systematically targeted and of course bots and of course getting voted down. And there's so much information that we have now that we didn't used to, like just knowing that. I mean, really, the information is just that white men have been running everything for so long. That's the information. And you go. Oh, yeah, all the critics are white men. Mm -hmm. All the people buying products, Mm -hmm. buying airtime, creating Mm -hmm. movies have Mm -hmm. all been white men. My taste isn't going to be the same as 
a white guy's taste. Right. If they're the ones, if I'm in a position, like you and I are in a position to help other people right. and empower other people. And most of the TV shows I was noticing, I liked, um, my most of my favorite shows were with white people. I mean, that's also just what's out there. I, there's, you know, I love Atlanta, I love Insecure, but, you know, and I'm like, so if I'm, if I'm the one picking, it's going to be unbalanced. So mm. all these white guys for so long. So everything I want to do is just to try to get, you know, women, people of color into, you know, more positions of power. I'm glad you brought it up because I feel like on social media, you are very vocal. Like you, you <laughs> I are. Know, I can't help it. No, but I think it's important because we're given a platform and we have to talk about the, the issues that affect us the greatest. Yeah. You always, always, obviously you're talking about gun violence. Yeah. You're also always talking about men of color. Yeah. And um, I mean, your, your Insta stories are inspiring and Thanks. like you will just blast people and you'll just be like, <laughs> this is what I'm thinking. This is what yeah. I'm feeling. And it didn't even take you, you know, having like a best black friend or a, like a black husband mm -hmm. to, to <laughs> educate yourself, right? Like yeah. you just took the time to really say like, I wanna know more, I'm gonna figure this out. And also with sexual assault and women and equality, like this, like you have really kind of stamped your name on a lot of this and you said, I'm not gonna just pick one thing that I'm going to yeah. chase after, I'm gonna chase after all of it. Well, it's hard, that's the thing. And then you're like, okay, am I spreading myself too thin? I'm gonna get burnt out. But also I just wanna do everything I possibly can to help. Mm -hmm. Because uh, you understand your platform. I understand my platform, I think. And then I'm also, I also don't give a shit if people are annoyed. Yeah, I'm just like, I'm gonna do what you want to do. I, what I want to do. And also the thing is, just, I didn't have access, I didn't see these numbers, these statistics, mm -hmm. that are so cripplingly horrifying once you look at them. All, the, the percentage of the art hanging in all museums in America is like, I think it's 90 four percent all white men really the art hanging i mean think about that forget about directors critics like just the art the art it's you know i didn't even think to like look into that well, no i didn't art i didn't look into it i just you know you the annenberg the institute this yeah. thing at usc they they just they come out with these statistics and you, you just read them and you go fuck that's not right at all and then these things you didn't hear like the crazy rich asians you know, yeah, premieres last night, and you go, these people have grown up without getting to see someone who looks like them in movies? Like, mm -hmm. like they didn't Black have Panther. Black Panther. I, it's just, people of color are so underserved in every market, mm -hmm. but in movies, it's like, same thing with us. It's like, they're not getting nice, and mm -hmm. let's throw these girls a bone. Mm -hmm. It's about money. Mm -hmm. People want to see people of color mm -hmm. in movies. People want to see girls with bodies. Mm -hmm. You know, and that everyone's not doing the right thing. It's not about that. It's about money. People need to wise up. I want to ask you, because for me, moving to New York and my first friend was black. Yeah. And she really had to school me. Coming from Nebraska, yeah. I knew nothing. Um, and then marrying my husband, who is black. Yeah. And I had to really get educated. I had to, like, think outside of my white privilege. You had to get woke. Hello. <laughs> and which, some days I don't even feel woke, because I'm still learning. And I'm yeah. still, like, I think if what? you're open to learning. Yeah. You have to be. An evolution. As that's a white, all you can do. As a white person, you have to be just open. Yeah. And not worry what? about defending yourself. But what is it? Uh, yeah, not being like, I'm not a racist. But I, but I know. I, this is the question I have. Right. Why did you decide to say, oh, I'm going to stand up for people of color? Why did you, like, was it someone in your life that affected you personally? Or was it just like, hey, you know what? What Black people are underserved. Minorities <laughs> are underserved. Like, what was it? Yeah. Well, my my best friend growing up was black. Okay. Kiana Baldwin. Um, hey, Kiana. What's up, Kiana? And, uh, you know, like, the black people are definitely a minority where I grew up, but we were we were friends and we hung out and didn't really realize the separation until we got a little older right and then you go i mean like really racist stuff like i mean in my school if anybody spoke spanish they were spanish right we didn't have any kids from spain in my school right Correct. but everyone Say just it, goes well Say we're it. talking to a cuban panamanian <laughs> yeah. right here right and they Can't go oh deal. you're spanish and you go no no mommy I'm hispanic <laughs> yes yes the teachers are Preach. not stopping us, you know? And in school, it was like, there was slavery and there was the Holocaust. 
but now everybody's fine and everybody's equal. <gasps> right. And you go, oh, good. That's it. That's how I was taught as well. So Holocaust no one told me about slavery. Frederick Douglass. Right. You were like, oh, I love that street. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but that's the thing. You know, you do like a book report on Frederick Douglass. You read a Maya Angelou poem and they're like, great, you did it. We did it. I didn't even do that. No, cool. it's, but now, but once we know. So, so the thing, it was just a, col a collection of, of just being oh, like aware and looking around. So it was like things like, you know, I used to play a character in my stand-up who would, she it was like I would say really irreverent things that she didn't realize were really sexist or racist or mean and mm -hmm. um and and then you, you know you as I started to get more eyes and ears on me it was like I don't want anyone to laugh at this stuff for the wrong reasons right so I I just didn't want to say that's anything like that anymore right. I wouldn't want to do a roast again I don't want to risk hurting somebody's feeling. These are communities that we need to be lifting up mm. because they've been so systematically horribly abused and being killed. So I so think it's, it's through comedy that you really I think found it's through comedy, through art, through relationships. through lemonade, through Hamilton, mm. through these things you didn't even realize. Oh my god, you guys didn't get to go see a Disney movie where you were the little princess. Mm. Seeing what my friends have, have gone through. Um and uh, yeah, and then and and really and, and the numbers, just those numbers mm -hmm. where you go, this is so, so fucked up, and mm -hmm. it's it's so fucked up as a woman. I've been fighting for women for so long that I didn't realize how much it had to be paired with also lifting up people of color, because yeah, women it's just of insane. Color. It's yeah. it's you know it's also, yeah. yeah. So um, yeah. And I, I have so curious. much guilt. I mean, you know, you have guilt about it. Well, you go, white guilt is a real thing. It's real. It and, is. you know, and I don't want to annoy anybody with that either. She is an incredible author. Yes, I what am. What else are you? A comedian. Oh, my God. She's an actress. I'm an otter. I don't uh, know what that means. Otter. It's an otter. An otter. I'm an That's otter. That's an animal. Oh, you're right. <laughs> I'm a squirrel. But she's here on Pretty Big Deal, I'm and here. we're chit-chatting. Yeah. I'm glad I don't have my period. <laughs> I know these couches. Wait, but on the back of this yeah. is all of my body makeup. A lot of body makeup. Yeah, but yeah. that's okay. That's fine. Yeah, whatever. Try clean them. Now we just know not to wear body makeup on white on white couches. Well, I heard about this invention called Thinks. There are these. They're underwear that you can wear. You don't have to wear a tampon or anything. Oh, it's a big padded panty. Oh, right. I have never I seen know. more propaganda for something than than things like everywhere. They're but like, it's this it like new invention, and I'm like, I guess I am an inventor because I've been doing that. With all my underwear, <laughs> my whole life. <laughs> so I guess I'm Sir Isaac Newton. Speaking of panties, I want to talk yes. about your fashion line. <laughs> oh yeah, cool. Um, you only gave us a, a tidbit. You only oh my god, said, and that's when everybody thought I was pregnant. I know you were like. Hey, I did guys. not mean to to do that either. I know you didn't because you're yeah. like, um, thanks for um, wondering about my womb. My womb. Thank you. When's your fashion line coming out? Uh, later this year, like December. Where is it going to be sold? The line will be available at Saks off Fifth. Mm -hmm. um, it is. Uh, I really wanted to make something for all sizes, affordable. That looks good. Yeah. The dream. Yeah. The dream. The dream. So that's what we're doing. That's amazing. and with your stylist. Yeah, Lisa Evans, who I met doing Trainwreck, and for me, like fittings for anything I was doing, uh, they were always like really really painful and filled with like some kind of shame and then the other person is like you know they're worried about if they're doing a good job so yeah. they're they can be a little mean yeah. and uh and then lisa I just, it was just totally different and she, she gets it she gets it and she's like she introduced me to a tailor you know you can get this is from zara um Did you it get was a like tailor? 40 bucks i got a tailor just a little yeah little in snip, here snip. and uh we love tailors. yeah Taylor's. I actually God bless. And they you, you can find a cheap one. You don't need to go to like some Exactly. Have yeah. you ever put panels in like to make it larger? Oh, I love that idea. Oh no. So I am like a have to wear a bra at all times kind of chick. Yeah. So we will add panels to the back of backless dresses every single day. Isn't that great? You mm -hmm. can just take their design as a suggestion. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> love this Stella. Now let's put my twist let's on it. Let's put a little panel <laughs> in the back there, sister. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay, so that's all we know. So it's coming out yeah, size it's, inclusive, it's, and we're all, like, we're literally on the edge of our seats. We, we want to know. We want to know. I baby. love your, your bikinis. Thank you. And I, lo I love I love your whole any? social media. Wait, Darcy, she needs Hello. lingerie 
swim of course. and all the, the things. Please, because I've gotten my period and all of my own shit. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know what's really <laughs> to get your period on? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thanks, bikini. Um, okay, so let's talk about comedy. Yeah. And let's talk about how I mean you have kind of switched up your comedy a little bit. It's gone from being you know funny to not (laughs) (laughs) no i didn't say that you went you 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 went from talking about sexual assault issues Mm -hmm. and like making them funny and now you're like oh no let's back this up like this is a real issue yeah and and i want to talk about your experience through that whole kind of changing your comedy and also sexual assaults because now the me too movement is is everywhere i know well we we didn't know how much it was everywhere. Well, I didn't. I, I mean, didn't either. That's the thing, and and that's why um, working with uh, with Times Up has been cool. You know, it's like this. Times Up is a little bit of a stigma. People are like, oh, who's that? Like actresses, but um, it, they really are doing really great work and just uh, connecting people. Like mm-hmm. just the the information I've gotten from them and, and connecting with people. It's like you find out. Farm workers, a lot of them make eleven thousand dollars a year, and they're on their husband. Their husbands get their paychecks. Like mm-hmm. there's no record of them. They don't have the power. They don't have the freedom to leave. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we have politicians right now trying to make domestic violence uh, a private issue and close down women's shelters. Right. I mean, just we're fighting against so much right now that um, I I got off the road for a little while because I I didn't want to go up and make jokes Mm. but you know i i now like i'm always trying to put shaved carrots in the brownies you know i loved that quote that yeah in the book yeah somebody said that once and i was like it was a it was a a writer it was a writer said about my tv show and i was like so it's the same thing with stand-up i'm trying to find a way to keep it to keep people laughing but also learn something yeah i really like that i mean there's there's like a moment where it just kind of hits you like like just smack in the face and you say I have to do something to change yeah. my narrative yeah even just to understand it yourself so that you know things like like and just paying attention where the culture is like mm-hmm. other comedians like nobody wants to hear a racist joke right now right nobody wants to hear a joke where the woman's the victim right read the room right and evolve and uh, you know and anybody who's like stepping up to defend the wrong side right now it's just not a good idea Mm-mm. just help us mm-hmm. you know they say that with me too it's like they're it's a witch hunt now and you're like one in six women get gets raped right it's a witch hunt it's a um you mean the thing where you burned us at the stake for no reason you don't have to get our backs but get a better fucking example mm-hmm. okay because mm-hmm. women have never been in power to systematically abuse it but we've learned that the other way doesn't work Mm -hmm. so so we should have the respect and the honor to be able to stand up and say what has affected us what has happened to us and coming forward is so painful and scary and life ruining Mm -hmm. at times Mm -hmm. so uh, it's so incredibly brave of these women you know it's like i'm so grateful to to the women who've come forward me too You actually talked to Oprah about <laughs> right about yeah. your uh, sexual assaults and yeah. um, and your experience and how it changed your comedy. What was that conversation like? Well, even though we were talking about sexual assault, it was still cool because I was talking to Oprah. Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> um, talking to her about it was really cool. Like I I know I know about her you know history mm-hmm. of sexual violence mm-hmm. and. Uh, you felt like you had a sister and like a camaraderie. I felt really it's Oprah, so you yeah. just you know you feel connected <laughs> to her anyway. But um, but yeah, I I did I did feel like we really connected on that, and also just as like a uh, you know using our voices to mm-hmm. you know just to not feel alone if anything. That's just, the biggest thing I yeah. think throughout this whole thing is like women hopefully are not feeling alone and. Yeah. And women who have had any kind of experience, whether it's um, you know sexual assault on a set or through a family member, or, or in being, a hotel, or being where they raped, work. and I just think that with me too, like we didn't all realize it was so rampant, so bad in every other industry, but literally, like we're trying to get hotel workers alarms around their right. necks, and you know, in advertising, in 
journalism it's everywhere mm -hmm. have you felt like the difference on sets because for me yeah it's it's been like i don't want to me too you oh let me move that hair off of your neck but this isn't a me too movement and it's like i know we can't joke about that it's really it's really uh, disappointing to yeah. see from people i think a lot of men that are good men that i'm close to that it you know it started oh god harvey what a piece of shit but then once these other offenses started popping up they go, well, now it's getting crazy, right? Right, guys? And you're like, no. And they, they their instinct is to discredit the women. Mm. Like, it's getting a little crazy now in case it happens to them. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really weak. Mm -hmm. And I think we need support. And and even though, you know, some of these guys are my friends. I was friends. just about to say, like, you have actually honored a, f a lot of men who – you're saying like this is an upright standing man who who I honor and, and say like I love and but I don't regret this happening to oh, them no. because it's moved the culture forward and let mm -hmm. people know hey coercion is not cool well I admire you for standing up I admire you for telling your story and Thank you. um I admire you well thanks all right, so every episode we on Pretty Big Deal, we want to honor a person or an initiative that is doing something to change their world, change our world, change perception. Cool. Um, so this episode, we're actually going to um, talk about Tiffany Missenbay. Have you heard about her? No. So she's a 16-year-old girl who lives in Washington, D.C., and she has now started a coalition to make the voting age younger to start at 16. It's called Vote 16 DC. And I think that it's really, it's great because cool. I mean, at 18, you can do a lot of things and then boom, you can vote. But yeah, if you could have voted at 16, would you have done it? Who I don't even remember who was running when I was 16. See, that's the thing. When I was 16 years old, my dad was like, we are Republicans and you will vote Republican. Yeah. Right. And I was like, I don't know what that means. Sure. Okay, daddy. Yeah. And at 16, like, I don't know that I would have made a sound decision. Now, today, with social media and the fact that you I can wonder. actually follow people who have a voice and have an opinion about what's going on in the government. Yeah. Maybe I would be a little bit totally. more educated. It's such a different time. Mm -hmm. I think you're right. Like, just seeing girls of all ages at these marches and stuff, it's like... Yes. So they are way more educated than I was, for sure. A hundred percent. Okay, so I want to play a little speed round gamey poo with you. Fun. I love a gamey poo. Whoop, whoop. Mm -hmm. um, all right, so I'm going to say a pretty big and then a word, and you're going to finish the sentence or how it feels or what comes to you. Okay. Okay? Um... Here we go. Speed round with Amy Schumer. Pretty big comedian. And then I say the name. Yeah, you can say okay. like a comedian who influenced you. Okay, Whoopi Goldberg. Pretty big mouth. Oh, Someone Kathy who's Griffin. Outspoken. Okay, who great. I love. Uh, pretty big penis energy. Yeah. Who's got the big D energy? The Rock? Oh, that's interesting. I never even I thought about it. Did you just you do like fingers, fingers crossed? crossed. <laughs> like maybe? I hope, the, I hope The Rock is a... Big penis. Okay, pretty big oh, recommendation. Oh, going to the site 5050 by 2020 on the internet. Re yeah. 5050 it, it, by 2020? It, yeah, it's, it's very cool. So all the information we talked about and also gets, it's for, you know, having people of color and women. Oh my gosh. Get 50% of the power by 2020. That's fantastic. Yeah. Noted. That's the dream. Um, last but not least, pretty big motto. We're all going to die. <laughs> <laughs> that was brought up multiple times today it's <laughs> a good way to live live uh, like every day's your last bitch <laughs> this is so awesome thank you so much for coming thanks for um, having us last but not least i know us good girl she's now sleeping yeah it's a little precious she had a hard thing. day of eating her own shit <laughs> <laughs> do you have anything that's coming out that you um want to let us and have a little inside scoop yeah. Like more information about your clothing line. Ooh. Yeah. So um, the clothing line's coming out soon. Okay. And, uh, and Are you also. Modeling it? Yeah, I am. <gasps> Fun. I know. People just have always wanted to see me on a runway. Yes. I think that's what we learned today. Well, when we met at the GQ Men of the War mm -hmm. uh, uh, Awards. It was in London, right? Yeah, it was yeah. in London. And you said, so I'm a plus size model. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, so here hi guys, are. here I am. Uh, yeah, so the clothing line, I'm so excited. And then I'm just on the road, I'm touring. Okay. Yeah, 
So that's it. I'm so excited. Thank what you about so you? Much. Oh, girl, I got so much. You got a lot. Girl, you, you an know. empire. You're I'm not going to be done till you're No, done. and we're going to make sure that you are wearing AG from head to toe. Hell yeah. Yeah, baby. I want it. Okay, thank you to you. Thank you to you, Miss Amy Schumer. Thank you to you. And thank you, everybody, for watching my podcast, Pretty Big Deal. I want you guys to continue to talk to me through social media. Go to Pretty Big Deal on Twitter and Instagram. You can also go to Anchor and send me a voice message. Guys, this has been Pretty Big Deal. Thank you so much for showing up. And remember, you are bold, you are brilliant, you are beautiful. Mwah.